Hi there. In this lesson from Launch Code, we're going to look at the IntelliJ Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. Um, what IDEs do is really bring together a lot of tools that you as a developer um, use on a regular basis and that can make your job easier and, and integrate them in a seamless way. So we're going to look at just a few of those features that you can use to uh, make your life as a coder uh, just that much better within this IDE. Um, and so I'm going to be working within the Mac version of IntelliJ, but things should be in, in the same place for Windows versions, and you really shouldn't see any significant difference there as we go through this. So what is an IDE and what does it do for you? What kinds of things can it do for you? Previously, we've been working in just uh, what you might call just sort of stripped down plain text editors or code editors like Atom or Sublime. And so these editors, they do things like syntax highlighting and they let you easily jump around the file system. And in some cases, they might even have integration with source control like Git, although we really didn't use that feature. Um, IDEs kind of go well beyond that. So they'll have those things. They'll, we're going to see that we definitely have um, syntax highlighting. We definitely have the ability to navigate around the file system. Um, however, we also have a lot more than that. So the integration with Git is going to be a lot more friendly, and we'll be able to use Git directly through our IDE rather than going to the command line. We're going to have other tools at our, at our disposal um, that help us build and run our projects. Um, we'll see later on in the class that we're going to have tools at our disposal that will help pull in external dependencies uh, from, from uh, repositories on the internet and build those into our projects when we're going to use external libraries. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that's really useful that'll help make your life as a coder easier. Let's just look at just a few of the features that you might um, use. So I just have the Java Exercises project opened up, and I'm just going to open up the, the Hello World, just get a simple example of a program to look at here. So the first thing I want to do is show you that there are several different ways you can run your code. Now, you've uh, been using IntelliJ for uh, for, the, for the last few days or, or, or a week or longer, but... Um, you might have just kind of stumbled onto one or two ways to run your code. There are actually probably four significant ways that you can use to run a program with an IntelliJ. Let's look at each one. The first is that if you're in a program, uh, a class with a main method, you'll see that there are these green run buttons on the left. And when I um, hover over these run buttons, I get three options, run, debug, and then run with coverage. Uh, most of the time you're going to want to run We'll talk about debugging in a future lesson, but let's just go ahead and, and run our program. So when we run the program, recall that uh, Java is a, is a compiled language. So every time we run our code, the, uh, the integrated development environment is going to go through the work of building our code for us. That's one of the features that it provides. So we see that our program ran just fine. Um, so there are three other ways that you can then run your code. If you right click on the main method, you'll see that you have a run option from within that right click menu. You can also right click on the file over in the um, project explorer and run it in the same way from the menu there. And then finally, up here at the top, there's this little panel of buttons and we see that there's a drop down uh, with, a, with some different options here. And so this is, is what's going to, this is going to give you access to what are called run configurations and run configurations are ways of customizing the way in which your application is run. So you might, uh, for, for example, give the compiler certain options about how it might build your code, uh, or tell it where certain external packages are on your system. Um, so when you're working on larger projects or when you're working in a professional setting, you'll usually be setting up a run configuration for the specific code you're working on. However, this is just for us, another place to run our applications from. The last application that you ran in any way is going to show up here as a run configuration, and you can run it with this green button in the same way that we ran it in, in the other ways. And again, there's a debug, uh, a debug way of running the application here. We'll look at debugging again in a future lesson. All right. So those are the four different common ways to run your program within IntelliJ. Let's look at some of the um, code related features that IntelliJ offers us. So I'm going to go down here and just create some space to play around. Uh, one of the great things about IntelliJ is that while we're working with compiled languages, we don't have to actually compile our code to see some of those compiler errors that might come up. So for example, let me just, uh, let me just say, I want to, um, I want to take this hello world message and I want to put it into a variable. So I'm going to make a string message equals hello world. Okay, so um, we already see that there seems to be something awry. There's a lot of redness there. Anytime you see red 
within your uh, within your your file that signals that you probably have a compiler error. So there's multiple places within this line that I've just created that there are problems. Let's look at how we can go about solving those. So generally, when you see a compiler error, you can um, you can hover over it or hover near it, and you'll get a suggestion as to what that error might be. So this one says too many characters in character literal. Hmm. Well, that's a that's a nice hint that uh, character literal seems to indicate that um, the compiler thinks that that is going to be a character as opposed to a string. Recall characters and strings are different in Java. This is supposed to be a string, so why might it be viewing this as a character? Well, it's because I use single quotes. That was silly. I've been used to doing a lot of Python, so let me get rid of the single quotes. And double quotes, much better. All right, and there I'm missing a semicolon. Okay, and we still have one problem right here. And this says cannot resolve symbol string. So the cannot resolve symbol is something you might see a lot, um, or will see a lot rather. That basically means that you're trying to use a, a data type or a class or a variable that the compiler doesn't know about. Um, so in this case, it says it can't find the symbol string. It can't find this class string. Well, that's because in Java, we capitalize string. I've been doing a lot of C-sharp too. And uh, so at C sharp, we don't capitalize the word string, but there we go. So we've resolved all of our compiler errors. So use those messages to your advantage. Um, there's one more common sort of compiler uh, issue you'll see. Let me show you how to do that. Suppose we also wanted to print out the current date within our program, right? I might use the built-in um, the built-in class date. That's part of the Java SDK. All right, and create a new date object. However. See, the date is, is red. That's a seemingly a problem, right? It says cannot resolve symbol date. How might I fix this? We know that date is available to us. If you look online, you'll see documentation that tells you that this is part of the Java SDK. Why can't I use it? Well, it turns out that in order to use that class directly, we need to import the package that it uh, is part of. So in order to do that, you just wanna, there's a, you could go up here and just write an import statement. However, there's also a quicker way to do that. If you put your cursor in this area, you'll see that you get a little context menu and that will have the most likely uh, resolutions to the error that you're looking at. In this case, the top one is import class. However, a slightly quicker, quicker way to do this when you're just typing is to um, use alt return. And this will give you that same menu. Okay. The one trick about that is that if you're going to hit that alt return button or use the import class from the context menu, pay attention to what you're importing. Sometimes there will be different classes that will be available to you um, that are in different packages and do different things, but might have the same name, right? So in this case, we imported Java util date. If I had, for instance, made some other date object within another program here, we would want to make sure that we were importing the right one. So just pay attention to what you're importing and making sure that it's actually the class you want. Okay, great. So let's look at a couple more features that will uh, make our lives a little easier in terms of navigating the code that we're working with. So let's see, I'm going to go from here over to, hmm, let me go to this methods package and open up hello methods and message. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Okay, so um, there are a couple, couple nice things about working with code that IntelliJ will do to make your life a lot easier. So again, this is a much more sophisticated environment than an editor like Atom. It doesn't just present us with the source code. It actually creates, uh, it actually knows um, a lot about the source code and the way it's linked together in a similar way that a compiler would. So for, in, for instance, one of the common things you might want to do is to change the name of a property or a variable or a parameter. So in this case, I have this, uh, this parameter to my get message method. It's called lang. Suppose I decide that that's not a great name, that I really should call it language. Lang is just a little bit too, too brief. It would be much more descriptive if I just used the full word. Well, I could just go in here and change the name of this variable and then look for every place that it's used and, uh, and go and change it there, right? So that I would see that once I change the name, I get these red error flags um, that, that indicate that this variable no longer exists, cannot resolve symbol. And I could go through and change those one by one. In this small file, that's not really that tedious. But imagine that you were working with code um, you, and you were talking about renaming a class that's used across your entire application in dozens of places. That would be really tedious. 
So there's a really great way to change the names of things within your code uh, and, and in a way that IntelliJ will smartly update things for you. So let's just right click on the identifier that we want to rename and then go to refactor and rename. Okay, and notice what this does is it puts IntelliJ in refactor mode um, on this particular identifier. And as I move my cursor, notice that every other instance of that property within the file or that parameter within the file is also changing. So I can just do that and hit enter and it will update all of those at once. And so you can use this refactor rename in a lot of different ways. You can use it to rename methods. So in this case, this method is used across multiple files. If I were to rename this method, it would update that uh, method call in the other files in which it's used. The same with the class name. So use um, the rename or the refactor rename functionality to cleanly update um, names of classes, properties, variables, etc., within your code. Um, a couple more functionality pieces that uh, are really great within IntelliJ are ways that you can sort of find or jump around within your code. So um, you might have used Command F or Control F within Atom to find certain things within your project. You can still do that here. You can still use um, Command F or, or Control F to bring up a little search box. However, there's a much more powerful way to search for things related to code within your project. Let me just show you um, a couple of those. One is that suppose I want to look at every place that this method is called, right? I want to find all of the usages of this method. I can do that by right clicking on the method name and going to find usages. And then in the find dialog, I will actually get every place that this method is used. So for example, suppose, you know, if I had uh, a comment that said, get message returns a message in the given language, right? So I would have this, this would be, if I just did a, a text search, it would return this comment, right? And that wouldn't really be a useful result to me. I would really want to just see where is this method used. And so using the find usages tool will show you just the actual usages of those in the code and not other sort of extraneous uh, mentions of the method. All right, there's also another, another way to get to uh, to find things within your code. If you're looking at a piece of code and you wonder, what, is this, what does this method do and where is it defined and how might I get more information about it? You can easily jump to the definition of something by using uh, control or command and uh, clicking or hovering over that thing, right? So right there, uh, there we go. Uh, so if I use command and hover over get message, I see a little bit of information about it. I see the method signature. I see that it's part of the message class. If I go ahead and click on that, it jumps over to the definition of that method. All right, that can be very, very useful when you're trying to read code and understand it. You might see where a method is used, want to know a little bit more about it, and you can easily jump to its definition um, using control, control click or command click. Now, you can also do that with variables, local variables, with properties, pretty much anything that's defined within a Java program you can look up. If you try to do it on something that's built in, you will get uh, bounced over to this sort of internal representation of built-in classes, uh, which sometimes can be useful, but um, you know, there's not really a lot here in these classes that you can't find in official Java documentation as well. All right, so those are just a few ways to use IntelliJ. Um, really, you know, try to use some of these in your daily coding practices, just add one or two at a time and try to integrate them into how you're coding and get used to them. Um, and also, you know, kind of explore. So there's a lot of functionality in IntelliJ and uh, we're actually going to explore debugging and version control in more depth in future lessons, but um, sort of don't, don't be overwhelmed or afraid of poking around and figuring out what these things do. The tool is here to make your life as a coder easier. And while it can be intimidating because there's just so much and there's so much that you might not know, uh, you know, if you can just learn one or two small things here or there, it's really going to make your life as a coder a lot easier.